What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jet Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shells. Brian, I said, Brian, that we're going to have to eat crow for the level of excitement and uh, jubilee <laughs> we had for the possibility of where the acolyte might take Star Wars 2 in terms of the future in terms of what to expect these are one of those occasions Brian that we were disappointed Brian shout out to the guy who did that trailer or the team or whoever did that trailer because those guys did a fantastic job in selling this but Brian after watching all three episodes Brian you texted me and I had not seen it yet you texted me. Uh, I don't know how they can come back from episode three. I think those were there. Those were, that's what the text was. Something like that. Brian, I was watching. I did not know what to expect. I had seemingly had some disappointment as to the demise of Carrie and Moss. Her character was just gone after the first joint. Little things, Brian, in this show that just baffled me, Brian. I want to hear your thoughts on not necessarily episode three, but sort of the first two episodes and then episode three. As you were watching episode three, what were you saying to yourself, Brian? Because I was in shock as, at, at some of the stuff that I was seeing here. So a lot to discuss here, and, and Pablo's right. We got got by the promotional <laughs> material on this one. <laughs> I yeah, mean, these aren't the droids you're looking for. You know, we, that Jedi mind trick uh, was in full effect. Um, I think at the outset, maybe a place to start is to say, we'll see where this discussion goes. I don't think if you're looking for this to become a rant and rave about the messaging and the social stuff and the racial stuff and the orientation stuff. This is probably not your podcast. I, I don't think we're going to be that far down that rabbit hole. I, I think no. we will touch on it because I don't think there's any way not to with the way this show is constructed. But I think the conversation and, and most of what I'm spending my time thinking about this show really doesn't have a lot to do with that, to be quite honest. Uh, it does tangentially, but not centrally. Yeah. I'll come back to this point, but I think there's something about the way this show has been written and presented that feels very different and very deliberate from other Star Wars products that have come under fire from the fan base in recent years. I did want to start with the one positive. I'm still a believer and a defender of Force Foo. I actually heard Leslie Headland talk about why they did it. And that piece, I think we did get right in the sense of she says outright that she cites George Lucas's view of the force devolving through time and kind of says the reason why they wanted to use kung fu martial art wirework style for the fighting in this series was the idea that the jedi would be so advanced at this earlier stage in history that they would basically not need their lightsaber most of the time to win battles or defend themselves. They would rely on the martial arts because of their connection to the force to defeat whatever their opposition was. And it was only later on when they no longer had that kind of connection to the force. Remember, I think it's Samuel L. Jackson that references in Phantom Menace, our connection to the force is diminished, that they would then be more reliant on the sword as a way to fight. I, that one little piece of it, I'm with. Now, the problem is we haven't seen much of that. The only fights we've actually seen have been the ones that were in the trailer, uh, which I think is one mm. of the problems with this show. But that one little piece, I still will defend that, that they got right or at mm. least made interesting. I just think with 
everything else around it, I think is going to die on the vine. I don't think it's really going to go anywhere when we talk about the future of Star Wars. So I have three main points and then we can get to the messaging thing. But my overall disappointment with this show, and maybe this is the place to start and get your reaction to it, is a lack of imagination in the core characters and storylines. I, You know, Amanda Stenberg's character to me is, aren't we just retreading two really played Star Wars tropes at this point? Like, haven't we done the twins thing enough in this series? Like, and Osha, who I guess is our hero or protagonist, like, hmm, let's see. She's a good mechanic. She's good at fixing things. She's a good pilot. She has a droid friend. I mean, that's Ray. That's Luke. It's the same character. Again, it's Anakin. It's We've seen this character over and over again. And like, if this show really wanted to be bold and different and tell a story from a Sith point of view, like, why, why did we need to, again, fail to break away from this Skywalker overhang? Why couldn't we come up with a new genesis for who this character was or, the, or like what they were about like when we met them that that was really the first thing that stood out to me was like i kind of just rolled my eyes i was like really we're doing this again just with a different ethnicity and a, and a different you know place in the galaxy like what, how did you respond to like just that idea that these were going to be this character and ultimately her twin sister was going to be what we were going to hinge all of this show on well, I was as I was watching the first two episodes, Brian. I was just sort of uh, taking in the idea of what this could be, right? I was just giving it a chance. The third one just sort of totally destroyed it for me. Uh, Brian, I would have to say, Brian, that some of the fights, Brian, were okay. I was enjoying the fight sequences. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Until it came, it, until it became a little bit too okay. It's like at one, at some point, you you sort of present yourself as this as this powerful person, but then you're again you're easily subdued in in a, in a different occasion and and by people who you wouldn't think you they would. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the third episode for me, Brian, was where it really all came crashing down. This flash, this whole episode of flashback, just really, I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what I was doing here. I understand what you were attempting to do, but the way you, they went about it, Brian, was, I think there was such a lack of thoughtfulness in terms of the writing, Brian. I think there was a lack of, like, Going after people that, in terms of performers, Brian, in terms of, in terms of performers, some of them are okay, but the children, yeah, they, they, they really, they, they really like destroyed for me that image of like you couldn't find some people that can really perform, and you couldn't find two kids that look alike. Instead, you throw a, a, a dreads on their hair and and. I'm sorry, Brian. I could, I, I, I lost it. <laughs> I was in awe. I was like, really? I was trying to see if there was like any similarity, but they were like, they were, they were two different kids. I don't know. And then they're, as adults, they look exactly the same. I don't know. I've never seen the reverse. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you use one actress for or one actor, one performer for two parts as adults, and you use two actors for two parts as kids. That's, that is going to happen. Look, let's go there. So this is my second complaint, and you're you're hitting on it. Weirdly, I almost feel like Leslie Helen and company in the writer's room felt like to channel the spirit of Star Wars, what they really wanted to do was imitate the terrible writing and wooden acting of George Lucas's prequels. I felt like I was back with Anakin and Padme yeah. on the shores of, of, of the lake at Naboo. I hate sand, it's so core. Like, are you kidding me? Like these lines are, t this show, for the people who are in the writer's room, who have written other things, and you, by all means people, you can look it up. The full writer's room has been published. You can see in the WGA who's in the room. 
These people have written other things of note. I'm telling you, like if I went through the people like individual episodes, like you would find them on high prestige TV shows. Okay. And Leslie Headland wrote Russian Doll, like all sort like got nominated for an Emmy for it. Like forget the messaging, just say the resume of these people. This is child writing. I'm sorry. Like you could, yeah, the child actors are bad, but like, look at what they're saying. The Jedi yeah. are bad. The Sith are bad. Like, <laughs> like we didn't we do this in Revenge of the Sith? From my point of view, the Jedi are evil. They're, like, I, the writing's just... terrible, and like the writing's terrible. And you have forget the child actors. You have Carrie Ann Moss at your disposal. You have Lee Jung Jae at your disposal. Like when you have people that have done other parts. To and it's like it. That's why I say it reminds me of Natalie Portman because like Natalie Portman went on to win an Oscar and like you you listen to her in Attack of the Clones and you're like how did we how did she possibly get from that to winning an it Oscar is, for Black yes, Swan yes. right? But that tells you the writing and the direction of Lucas himself at that time just wasn't there. And I feel that way in this show. The acting is so wooden. The yeah. line deliveries are just not that good. Like Carrie Ann Moss is not boring and like. Indara's kind of boring when she talks. Mm. Like it's yeah. like I don't know what was going on when they were on set making this, but there's no fire. There's no energy. Like I, so that's you know you said it. Like the, I think the writing's poor. I think the performances are subpar, and it just drags. Like the show drags at every that turn. Was a tough Even watch. It's sort of interesting. It's oh, in a bad way. These new individuals who were talking or speaking of the force and talking speaking of it from their perspective brian okay and then you go in through this ceremony and it's like there isn't any uniqueness to it bingo well you're on it you're on it like it's what I mean by lack of imagination, right? It's like lack of imagination extends to character creation, it extends to dialogue, it extends to how you're setting up your scenes and your sequences. Like I said, the only burst of imagination here has been the fighting. Like that is the one idea that has been, yeah. that so far has been put forth. Like every other idea to me, which we can, we'll get to as we keep going here, even if there's a hint of originality to it, the execution is so ham-handed and the delivery is so weak, you just kind of it lose. Dissipates. Yeah, you lose the impact you're trying to have, I think. Yeah, Brian, and then there's this, there's, and on one hand, you show me that this dude can save people from, with using the force, right? And you have this <laughs> ability. And then the next moment you're reaching out talking about, hold on. I had the same exact reaction. I was like, Whoa. Star Wars Theory is an episode, is a channel on YouTube. And they said, and he said, and he was talking to another guy regarding Andor. Okay. They didn't like it. Which was weird to me. And he said something to the effect, maybe they should do Star Wars over, but do it better. I scared scoffed at it at the moment up until what I saw on Saturday morning when, when, on Friday, Friday morning and I said you know what maybe that is the answer Brian because people cannot seem to let go of the Skywalker family and that whole thing why not do it over Brian I mean, they will someday. But. Yeah, they will somewhere. And 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 the other thing that's a little bit out there, and we could, you know what? Let me save it. Let's continue on with this. Uh, yeah. Because if it feels like this show is over, Brian, <laughs> and we still got how many episodes of this to go? Five. Five. I, I was actually tempted to give the rating now and basically say like, there is no, there is, it doesn't matter. Like in some ways, I don't think it does matter what will happen. I think that the viewership will really peter out on this and already has started to. The debut was strong. People were there for episodes one and two. People were less there for episode three. The pacing, the trend line is, is down. 
And I think that's because of some of the stuff we talked about. My last thing, lack of, my last, my third major tenant, lack of imagination. The locations, the sets, the worlds. This is our first chance to look at the High Republic other than in a video game. Where did the money go? Like somewhere there's a dude or a woman walking around with a sack full of like a hundred million dollars because these sets are, have no imagination. Yeah. They look like cheap sets out of like an old shooter game. Like there's five, you know what I mean? Like there's just no, like. I rocks burning. Yeah. And like, I especially <laughs> felt this way in episode three because to me, they're trying to pitch you on this lesbian coven of witches that has been sort of exiled from mainstream Jedi society. We'll get back to that. But you're trying to show them as superior thread users slash force users who have kind of evolved their connection to the force to be able to do things that even the Jedi can't do. And maybe there's dark side involved in that and, and so forth. But to me, if you want to show them as a civilization or a marginalized people that has overcome, why not show the imagination to have them build a world driven by that magic, driven yeah. to sh and showing visualizations of force deployment architecture that we haven't seen in Star Wars before. Like, Whatever you say about like Star Wars from its very basics, like, yeah, they kind of kept it simple, but it's like, oh, we have, an, we have a snow planet. We have a forest planet. We have a desert planet. Like, they, oh, there's a city planet. Lucas always tried to change the milieu to make you feel like you were someplace new, even if what he was doing fundamentally was kind of simple. Yeah. This show makes no effort to do that. To me, every location looks exactly the same. And it looks the same as things we've already seen. It just looks honestly kind of cheaper, especially considering they, they didn't do it in the They just put a name on it. That's all. They yeah, just put so a name that, on where's it. Where's the imagination? Like, you're trying to do something different in a different time period, but you're not convincing me, and I don't think you're convincing a lot of other people watching this show, that it is different yeah. in that sense. So again, lack of imagination in storytelling and character creation, lack of imagination and direction in the acting, and lack of imagination in sort of set and production design. Like those are three major strikes that again, I, it's hard to come back from those when you have that. Yeah. Brian, there was also this, this, this relationship between the two sisters that sort of took a turn for, for the worse. Yeah. And I don't really want to get into it too much, but the way they sort of did that, Brian, I was like, this is Disney, yo? This oh, is family wow. friendly, yo? Oh, this yeah. Is... Well, they, okay, now you're treading close to the, yeah, the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm saying, I'm asking the question I've been asking ever since they signed on with Deadpool and now even more with, with, with rock moves involved. Yeah. Have they sold their soul for profit, Brian? Forget about family friendly, Brian. Well, I would argue that they haven't sold their soul for profit. They've sold their soul for agenda. Because I think the audience is telling you agenda, too much agenda equals less profit. Yeah. Like that's one of the main complaints with Lightyear. It's one of the main complaints with, uh, what was it, Strange, Strange World. Uh, it's been one of the recurring complaints with recent Marvel and anything Disney. So yeah. I actually would argue this is where we get into the, the sensitive subject of the messaging, but it's in this show impossible to avoid. Now, Pablo, I, you know what I was reminded of, um, and I rewatched it recently, was Obi-Wan, the series. Mm -hmm. You remember all the vitriol around uh, Moses Ingram's Reva character in that show, right? It forced Ewan McGregor to kind of post the social media video, basically defending her and sort of saying, like, if you're not, if you're tearing her down, then you're not a Star Wars fan. Oh, she was, yeah, she was basically the main villain of the series, yes, not yes, Vader, yes, yes, right? Which that yeah. I think is a fundamental flaw. But I, as we said at the time and rewatching the show recently, I rewatched it recently, I stand by what I said. Moses Ingram did no wrong. 
I mean, yeah. to me, like she executes the part that she's given and gives a committed performance. The problem is in the character itself, which is sort of similar to what we're talking about here. It's like, yeah. it, but what wound up happening was people took that character as like, well, D Disney is sold out for the agenda and the messaging. And that's all that's at work here. And mm -hmm. what people really wanted is it was like, where's, well, I want more Obi-Wan. So I kept thinking about that in my mind as I was going through this. But here's what I think is the difference that I feel. I can't prove it, but I feel it. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. When they wrote Obi-Wan, I don't think they expected the backlash that they got. I think they were mm -hmm. just making the show and they were putting it more of an emphasis on representation in making the show. Mm -hmm. And then what came back at them was the backlash that's become really common in Star Wars. I think this show was made for the backlash. And I haven't heard people make that claim, but I feel it. I can feel it down in my plums. <laughs> which is why I don't really want to talk about it as much. Mm -hmm. Because to me, this show, the way it's written, how blunt it is. I mean, the speeches in episode three, where they're talking about, you know, the galaxy doesn't like women like us and we've been persecuted and we were almost driven to the point of, ex I mean, the, you know, the Jedi depiction, I mean, the J Jedi as police state, like you get, there's so much there if you want to get into that muck and that fight, you can do it for days on end. And there's a lot of podcasts that are and a lot of articles yeah. that are. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't is because it feels so conscious to me that when they were in the writer's room, they're sitting there being like, oh, this is gonna piss them off. Let's put it in the show. There's that feel of very deliberate, purposeful, like baiting. <clears throat> to that would get be the only people, other reason. To get people riled up. and. And to me, like, I'm not interested in that. So like, rather than get all bent out of shape about it and rather than like rant and rave, like to me, I'm leaving most of that and saying, I, I think I see what you're doing. I'm not gonna step in your bear trap because your show is so bad in so many other areas. I'm gonna focus on the creative and the technical side of yeah. this show that are disappointing me. And you can have your fight over there because this show isn't good enough in the other areas for me to even really engage with you on that. Yes, exactly, exactly. When you show, in my opinion, the lack of imagination and the lack of execution, I think you do a disservice to the, regardless of how I feel about your message, I think you do a disservice to the message you're trying to promote when you fall short in those other areas. And that's how I kind of feel this show has gone after three episodes. And I don't see a real way back for them in the final five. If you're in the writer's room and you're reading and you're going over this stuff, are, are you saying to them, hey, what are we doing here, guys? This is horrible. Are you saying anything or are you just keeping quiet? I don't know. But I who's in the room to say, Yo oh, that is whack. Is deliberate it's, is so plain it can't be an accident that that's why i'm just sort of that's why i say the difference between the, like the reaver character to me was like they were trying to build and write the show they wanted and they happened to create a character that hit a nerve in a bad way unfortunately yeah. with a lot of like this show to me is like they're sitting there almost looking for ways to do that and i there's a lot i don't even want to talk about all of them like i have yeah, several yeah, that i'm yeah. sure everyone's got their list and like i'm sure the show has ardent defenders like i've read and listened to park podcasts and articles that are huge fans of this but but my la but here's what my counter to that because if we're talking about what is Star Wars? And I feel like with all of these shows and movies, that's really what we wind up talking about. Like, what is mm -hmm. Star Wars really? I go back to the one thing George Lucas said about what, who Star Wars is for. He said, it's for 12-year-old kids. And to me, if you're making something to entertain 12-year-old kids, then above all else, it has to be one thing and one thing only. Fun. Where's the fun in this show? Like, there even if you love the content, even if you love how they have tried to subvert 
the force, the Jedi, the Sith, even if you love all of that, are you really having fun watching this show so far? Because I, 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 if you are, then your pulse is pretty low because there haven't been a lot of fun. I told somebody, yo, episode three to me is offensive, yo. And I almost considered, I'm still considering canceling Disney Plus, yo. Because I think there's probably people who have done that. I think there's people who have already done that based on other, other product that's on there. But like I said, you know, to me, and that's why, like, when you want to say people who don't like Andrew, that's fine. That's fine. You, everyone's got their opinion, no matter how mm -hmm. wrong it is. Um, <laughs> but Andor to me is quintessential Star Wars and Star Wars reinvention because the questions they focused on, how does rebellion start? How does an empire hunt a fledgling? Re These to me are core unexplored questions central to Star Wars. And even though there were parts of it that were bleak, it always came back to fun. Like think about that, like, they're on this planet with the culture of this celestial phenomenon. And then you realize, A, that thing looks freaking cool. And B, it turns into a massive Star Warsian chase. Like, that's they, it. They, they set it up so beautifully. The way they described it early and, and then you actually get to see it in all this beauty. Oh, man. They, they, and those on another level, man. You can't, I can't even, I can't even talk about what Star Wars, what we're getting now to Andor. Andor is his own thing. <laughs> We have to ask the question, Brian, is the future of Star Wars in jeopardy? Yeah, I think so. In I mean, you, what, yeah. in, well, okay, so in what regard? Uh, is it, are we gonna take a break, a long break, a 10 year <laughs> break? I mean- I give you the Marcus Aurelius look? <laughs> <laughs> <A> pirate <laughs> we're already in um year what are we now 2019 to 2024 so we're five years down we know the first star wars movie they want to get out there won't be coming until 2026 at the earliest so right there you're you're seven years out um i think you have major questions you know, we that this whole Ray movie. When I see this show, and then you think about that Ray movie, and there's already smoke around that. I, I I told you from the beginning. I think that project is DOA, and I think this show is only putting nails in the coffin of that movie in particular. Um, you know, I'm excited about the concept of Rogue Squadron, but I'm not convinced that's going to get made. I mean, that thing was already effectively canceled once, and then seemingly resurrected. And like, you know, Patty Jenkins is a it's her way or the highway director. Um, and she herself, as we know, with Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman 84 has, you know, she's, she's been at the high, she's been at the peak and she's been at the valley of, of, of this whole discussion. You know, so then you're kind of left with, all right, the Filoni verse, which is Star Wars. I mean, there's no question the Mando show and, and I thought, you know, the Ahsoka show, like they're incons there's some inconsistency in, in the level, but it's still very much Star Wars. So mm -hmm. that movie's out there. But like, is that a billion dollar movie? Like, I don't know that those shows translate to a billion dollar, billion five type of result. I mean, and the thing I'm probably most interested in is the mangled origin of the force. But I kind of feel like this show hurts the cause of that movie, too, because like this show is kind of going backwards in time. And like, unless he's going to be able to make a film that's totally disconnected from some of the ideas that this show is putting out there this show might be hamstringing him a little bit in terms of what he's able to do with the first Jedi. So I, yeah, I have major questions. Like the IP to me is not in good shape. And like, in fairness, I think there is the outstanding question of, to your point, short of literally just remaking the original movies, the original three movies, just those three movies over and over again with no changes to the dialogue and no changes to the to the you know ethnicity of the cast or, or whatever is that the only thing that like star wars fandom would rally behind they don't seem to like anything like nobody I mean, hates star wars like star wars fans <laughs> so if that's the case like you know how, how do you win right I, I think of it like in the Star Trek universe, I, you know, there's definitely been low points. There's definitely been crappy stuff that's come out of the Star Trek universe. But like, I never felt like the Star Trek fandom was like actively trying to destroy Star Trek from the inside. Like, whereas it does feel like that this 
this arena has become so toxic that it does feel like the best thing for all hands would be, well, we know one obvious choice would be, you, you know, K-squared got to go yesterday. <laughs> And this show should be the latest reason why that should be the Not case. Not only but, her, Brian. We'll get into that later. But, yeah, I kind of feel like Star Wars should almost be put on the shelf, like, entirely for a long time in all forms. And just, like, let it gather dust and then let the let things kind of chill and then maybe sort of start over. Let them wander in the desert for 40 years and then... Let Pull an Obi Wan, man. Pull an yeah. Obi Wan. Go, go hide in the, you know, <laughs> hide in the sand dunes, you know. So, yeah. I still say that they missed out on that opportunity to really focus on the future when they had Kenobi reaching out or trying to call out to his uh, former master Qui Gon, and he would not respond. And in that moment, he met this young lady or this lady. And in his moment of vulnerability, he did what Jedi's don't do. And in the future, we got an Obi-Wan kid that nobody knows about. But instead, I don't even know, Brian, if they killed her off or... Yeah, it she's like she pa- yeah, yeah, she's right? She Brian, died. we got five more episodes left. Let's see <laughs> if, what people have to say about it, Brian. But but like you said, I don't know how you come back from it. Well, so here's, zero, here's, here's the thing. I, I sent this to you right before we taped. I'm starting the. I'm starting the. I might need to trademark this. I don't know. It's not the best description, but Mouse Aganda. That's this is my this is my word for you. It's like when stuff comes out of Disney that's di- clearly directly aimed at diffusing a certain narrative. We got a couple of those floating around these days. But when it comes to Star Wars, because this show dropped and the reaction has been what it is, and you guys can look. It's getting review bombs. Some of that's BS. Some of that's bots. All that stuff. Mouse Aganda. But some of it is much more vitriol about especially the agenda that we're talking about here i haven't heard as much about the production stuff but i have heard people complaining the show looks cheap that's one i definitely have um have seen in a number of places but jude law who by the way is in star wars skeleton crew he's the lead kind of the lead actor in what's kind of a child-led series by uh john watts director of the spider-man trilogy Mm -hmm. well so jude law is doing the interview circuit Mm -hmm. And what does he happen to say about Skeleton Crew? Quote, well, obviously, it's a whole lot of fun. And I don't say that in a patronizing way, but, you know, I really wanted to bring the fun to it. Is it any coincidence that the lead of the next Star Wars TV show is pitching fun after this show took the fun factor to zero in three week, in three episodes? Like, that's what I mean, like, Listen, I'm not saying Jude Law is, a, is but it, timing is spooky, man. That's like everyone's saying this show yeah. isn't Star Wars. This show isn't fun. I'm not having a good time. And then he's like, no, but the next one, the next one's fun. <laughs> this is going to be a tough watch for five weeks. <laughs> I'm out, man. Yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the latest episode of The Acolyte and the series thus far. Are you going to stick it out and watch the the next five episodes? Uh, Do you think, how do you think Star Wars can come back from this? Brian and I have mentioned other possibilities and some possibilities that have been mentioned in terms of where they can go, which is going back to the very beginning of the Jedi and how that all began, right? Then we could possibly go into the Jedi Academy with Sebastian Stan. Forget about Rey. Forget about Rey, because at the end of the day, she's not a Skywalker, right? That's a lie that we're going to start off with that. She ain't no damn Skywalker. But let's let's get let's get that straight. As always, I think there there are things here. If you wanted to pull on the strands of history to deliver what I think would be at least a, an interesting Star Warsian story, there continues to be in my mind a refusal to everyone talks about the Jedi as being at the height of power. 
the further back we go. But they refuse to show you that. <laughs> These guys suck all the time. And I get that this is a show that's supposed to make you empathize with the Sith. Now, we just saw in X-Men 97, the brilliant way to make you empathize with the other side. And this show is doing anything but that. Yes. But I understand that this show is designed to make you hate the Jedi and it wants to make you suspicious of the Jedi. I understand that conceptually. Sorry. But there is also, they do also talk about them as if they're like so powerful and there's just like, as if they're all that. And yet they kind of look like Keystone cops when they're, you know, kind of going around. So can we actually yeah. see a scale epic where they are at the height of their power? Like, can, like to me, it's like, I'm going to invoke this comparison because he wanted to make a Star Wars movie and I'm glad he didn't. But you know what? <laughs> How about 300 meets Star Wars? What if you made a movie where the, th the Spartans were Jedi and they had to fight against overwhelming odds against some kind of opposite? And you get to see like a war movie basically fought by the Jedi at the height of their power to establish how awesome they are. I don't know. I just like we seem unwilling to scale out. They constantly like are like there's so many Jedi. There's so many of them. They're so powerful. But we see like four we see like two like we don't ever see like a large scale epic involving them uh, we certainly okay we have never seen the lord of the rings type helms deep movie involving the, the jedi. jedi we haven't seen last samurai types we haven't seen the epic uh i don't know if i'm if i want to see it brian because I don't know how that would translate, you know, a bunch of bright lights on the screen. I don't know. I don't know. It can't it's be just... worse than this. Certainly it could, Brian. That's, That's what I'm saying. It's like, we already, we already there. Like, we, why, we, why aren't we, you know, like, that's the thing. This show does swing. And there, I want it, like when it started to go off the rails, I wanted to think of it as a noble failure. And now I just don't think there's any, I don't think the nobility is there anymore. Um, if you want, I'll give you, I'll give you something, Brian, to sort of use this as a template, possibly. There are two seasons of this, but the first one, and then a couple in the second season were fantastic. The first season was the first episode of Star Wars Vision. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's a good call. That that to me was sort of on the same playing field as sort of what we thought, Brian, uh in terms of kung fu, right? In terms of yeah. that 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 sort of fighting style. Then there were two, I don't know if you saw the two episodes in in um Visions 2, the season 2 of it. No, I didn't see that. You got to see it. You got to see it. Trust me, you got to see it. Okay. There were two episodes that were really beautifully animated and really well done as well. But there are some, those are the hopes. That's it. I know Filoni is trying to do. I don't know if he succeed because to me, Brian, I think his live action is more kiddish to me, more of the 12 year old more to TV. me. It's more TV. For, yeah, it's yes, small yes, scale. yes. That's the issue. I, it's I, I, I don't know yeah. how it will translate in the movies. And, yeah. I, and this is my point, like, you know, like, to, we love Andor, we think Andor is a classic, we're going to get another season of Andor, but it's not like Andor viewership was Squid Game. You know no. what I mean? Like, and Mandalorian viewership dropped over 20% in the most recent season. So this is sort of my point that like, there's damage being done across the IP by the other stuff that's not working for people. So, like, even if Andor season two is as good or better than season one, I'm not convinced that, like, the audience for that is going to be massive, massive. It may be more of a cult hit than, yeah. you know, sort of a, a true zeitgeist event. Like, we just got through it was also produced by Disney. And this is my point of, like, Disney's still capable of greatness. Like, we talked about X-Men 97 on the animated side, but Shogun, like, now there was a show 
where they stayed pretty true to the spirit of the original work. It captured audience imagination. Ratings were massive to the point where they forced everyone back to do more seasons when they didn't really want to. They paid them so much money now. So Are they doing more seasons? Yeah, again? they committed to two more seasons. They weren't they weren't going to do it, and they basically waved a big enough bag that made them do it, and they signed them. So they're in for two more seasons. So this two more seasons are not based on any actual book. No, it's Game of Thrones all over again, man. That's what this is going to be. But haven't didn't we see the result of what his plan was in the? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. So we're like, just going to see it through, really? <laughs> now I, gonna... I guess, and and like sadly, like. Anna Sawai's character's, spoiler alert, dead. So you lose your female lead, right? You can't bring her back because she died in the novel and died in the series because they didn't think there was going to be any more. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, but my point is, Disney clearly had it in them to allow that show to get made the way it got made. It, it looked great. Yeah. It was gripping start to finish and people showed up in numbers to support it. We're just not seeing that in the Star Wars IP. Yeah. Not seen it anywhere, and I don't trust. Yeah. When I look at the roster of what's coming, I don't see it. Like I, I said, the yeah. manual thing is the thing that most excites me, but I don't see the the surefire. Like this is it. Like here's your winner. They haven't been able to escape Darth Vader. Nope. And they haven't been able to escape Luke Skywalker. You can nope. keep Luke Skywalker by bringing Sebastian Stan. Yeah, and that's the right comedy. It's right there. Just it's like that, dude. He's in the like, building. <laughs> and don't just okay, okay, okay. Let's say you decide to go this route. Don't give me garbage. Don't give me garbage. Because if you give me garbage, I don't want to hear from none of that anymore. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm sort of done now. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, man. Because I know it's a lot. Let us know in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time on the Ninja Report. They got one thing right, Pablo. Remember the quote from the first episode of this show, an acolyte. Mm -hmm. An acolyte kills the dream. The show goes on!